Hey guys, so this is part two of my greatest finds at estate sales uh, ever. Um, like I mentioned in the first video, I mean, I've come across some really awesome stuff for good prices over the years. I'm sure a lot of you guys have as well. Um, I'm really excited to show you what's here on the table, another variety of things. Um, if you haven't already, please check out part one. Um, and I appreciate you being here for part two as well. I enjoy making these videos. I'm very passionate about history, as most of you know. But um, I got some really good stuff to share with you, and so I'm going to go ahead and bring you in. All right, so here it is. Again, as you see, table full of stuff. Got a pretty good variety of things here. And like I said, all of these items have come from estate sales over the years. Uh, I mentioned in my first video, estatesales.net is a great way to find uh, upcoming estate sales in your area, so check that out. And no, that's not paid promotion right there. It'd be awesome, but go ahead and get started here um i've got this rifle here at the back of my table this is actually a finish m39 and uh, it's been in a couple other videos really nice uh finish rifle here i have not shot it unfortunately um got it a couple years or so ago for 400 dollars at an estate sale um i got in line i actually stood out in the cold and um for man i don't know like an hour and a half two hours and i was i believe the third person in line and luckily, I went right to the gun table, and this was there, and I got it. And uh, really good score there. I always wanted another finished rifle. Pretty cool there, 400 bucks. Right here, I've got seven uh, CBI patches. Um, I got these at a state sale for $6 a piece. So you do the math. I've got, a, what, $42 in these patches. And they're different variety. Like, this one's made of leather. That's pretty cool there. I know these are very collectible, you know. Um, there's so many different styles and variations and stuff, but uh, for six dollars a piece, I definitely did good on these. Um, got these mm, maybe two, three years ago. Um, it's so interesting how many different variations there are of, of these, especially these CBI patches. Some are cloth, again, leather. Um, this one's like a woven here, pretty cool. And the last one here is like a bullion type very nice so six bucks a piece did really good on those uh, underneath those here you see i've got some m1 carbine magazines and a couple 1911 magazines um, these actually came from different estate sales and honestly i couldn't remember exactly how many of these m1 carbines i got or uh, magazines i got at estate sales because i got them at more than one but i know this was uh, a good representation and uh, i went to one estate sale and i got i believe it was like six or seven m1 carbine magazines for twenty dollars for all of them not twenty dollars piece twenty dollars for all of them that was probably four or five years ago maybe five six years ago um got these 1911 magazines here at another estate sale um i think i paid like 10 or 15 bucks for both of them something like that you know um most of the time i can remember pricing on stuff but uh back to these m1 carbine magazines you know these are still in the original wax paper you know, and um, this originally looks like a dollar ninety-five or a dollar seventy-five. Um, but again, these are in, in the original uh, paper, never been uh, opened or messed with. At least not some of them. This one, somebody took a peek in. But I've actually got more uh, wax paper or wax wrapped in one carving magazines that I, I got at you know other places. But always cool to have more of those in the collection. Definitely very cool and unique. So many different makers of those as well. Got a couple. M1 Carbine Magazine uh, butt pouches here, or pouches here, pretty cool. Um, got this uh, M1 Garand uh, cartridge belt. Now, this one would be, uh, I can't remember if it's very late World War II or Korean War. You see it's the, the OD7, the greenish color. But um, I got that for $2 at an estate sale. I do remember that. Um, I've got three M1 Carbine rifle stocks. And one M1 Garand rifle stock with an M1 Garand top hand guard. Um, I got these at an estate sale. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I think I paid like $30 or $40 for them. It wasn't a whole lot. Um, again, I, for the most part, I know exactly what I paid for something or roundabout. But that was a good score on these uh, a few years ago as well. Um, I actually got a canteen right here. It's from 1918, so World War I era, aluminum goods manufacturing company. 
And uh, it actually came with this cup. I got this at the estate of this veteran, Hugh Knott. It actually says stolen from Hugh Knott, and it's, you know, etched or engraved right there. So I guess he didn't want somebody to take his stuff during the war, so he made sure he put his name on there. And if somebody else had it in their possession, they stole it from him. But uh, it basically lists all the countries, you know, that he was in. England, France, Belgium, Germany. Um, it's even got, like, Iceland and a couple other areas on here that I can't pronounce and don't want to try. But, um... Pretty cool there. You know, it's always cool to get the canteen with the cup. I wish it had the cover, but uh, I paid $25 for this. And uh, I'm thankful for that because, again, it is engraved and personalized, so that's really awesome. Right here, this is real special. Um, I've got this lieutenant-marked um, M1 helmet right here. And um, what's cool about it is I actually did a paint removal on the inside because... I saw some uh, some letters and, and um, numbers underneath the paint, and I actually uncovered this. It's G. Humphreys, and then it's got his uh, officer's number. It's uh, zero, and then two. I mean O, and then two two zero four six one four. It looks like. I also uncovered another name here, uh, Thomas J. Uh, Canaglia or Caniglia. It's actually on there twice. It kind of overlaps a little bit. But Thomas J. Coniglia, I believe that's what it is. But um, very awesome there. It's got like a grayish color, which makes me think it could have been navy. Um, I actually got it with this liner here, which I'll show you here in a second. I got it for 20 bucks. Again, this helmet and this awesome liner was with it. It's got SP, which uh, Shore Patrol... Um, I believe it's short patrol. I'm running the blank, but what's awesome is it's got third armored, you know, the spearhead decals on both sides. Um, I actually keep these separate because the helmet liner is misshapen. Um, it is World War II for sure. Uh, it's definitely been through some crud for sure. It's been through a lot of use and wear, but um, as you see, it's misshapen, so it won't fit in the helmet properly, and I don't want to force it and damage uh, what's here on the outside because it's already been flaking and stuff obviously but um really cool liner there it's got an awesome uh you know paint on the outside and then again the lieutenant bar and it's named i i did some research before i need to kind of search back into it and see what else i can find but i got this set here for 20 dollars total the liner and the helmet 20 bucks and that was awesome very cool and i got it about four years ago i believe it was in 2020 so Awesome score then for sure. Right here, I've got a um, haversack. And um, this one, let me see. It's, uh, it's dated somewhere. I think it's 1942, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's see. I always put these tags on here with a description of, of what the item is and what I paid for it on the back. Yeah, World War II. Okay, it's dated 1942. Got it for 20 bucks at an estate sale. Now, uh, it's mostly complete. It's actually got this um, tool right here on the side, but um, overall, it's in pretty good shape for its age and everything, but um, for $20, I think I did pretty good on it, um, for sure, you know. I don't mind paying 20 bucks for something like this. Moving on here, I've got a field jacket. Now, uh, yesterday when I made part one, I had an oval bubble glass like world war one era soldier photo or portrait with uh, i guess a sibling or a child with them and it came from i said a man i went to church with who passed away i think he was like 81 when he passed away three or four years ago um but i've forgotten i actually had gotten his field jacket his last name was reynolds right there we called him brother reynolds um this is a pretty cool um Field jacket, it's World War II era, even though obviously he didn't serve during World War II. It says U.S. Army on there. Um, he was born in the 19, late 1930s. I can't remember if it was like 1937 or 38 or something like that, but he was in the military in the 50s. And we know, you know, a lot of stuff was reused after World War II into Korea and Vietnam and after World War I into World War II and so forth. But this is a World War II uh, M43 field jacket. It's a large size, too. Like, I put this on. It's 
you see it's a, a regular extra large which is a pretty i guess uncommon size because a lot of them are like 34 36 38 and so forth but this is definitely a, a big size here and um i actually got it for uh ten dollars so that was pretty cool you know and again i guess i got an attachment to it because i, I knew the man went to church with him he was a good man very friendly and everything very humble um the last thing i want to show you guys is this right here it says type bomber b24m and then it says batteries let me spin it around here it says calibration headset and check this out flip it up it says signal core frequency meter and it's got a 43 on there, dash 43, you know, Philadelphia 43. I, so I assume it's 1943. But um, I haven't opened this up in a few years since I got it. But it's actually pretty cool. Look at that. Again, frequency meter, signal core. And uh, I'm pretty sure it is World War II. But I can just imagine, like, what all took place, you know, during the service with this. What all was sounds it made, whatever it was heard by using it. Um... This right here, I actually forgot about this. I'm getting excited about it again now. It's something how you can get so many items and you just forget about some of the cool stuff. Um, yeah, calibration book and everything. It's got all kind of frequencies and stuff, and I have no idea what this stuff is, but it's still cool anyways. It's like I'm rediscovering it again. But anyways, um, pretty cool there. Honestly, guys, I got this at, again, the state sale, and I paid $10 for it. And it weighs like 950 pounds. I'm exaggerating just a little bit. It might be 925 pounds, but um, I'm a pretty strong guy. You know, I can bench like 1,200 pounds and squat 1,500 and all that kind of stuff. But this right here is pretty heavy. It's not for us old folks because I'm 38 now. You know, I'm getting old and everything. Not as strong as I used to be. But I wanted to open up the back here if I can. And look on the inside there. It's got wires and stuff. It smells um, horrendous in here. I think something died or something's died in here. But anyways, pretty cool uh, item there that I, I need to get more uh, information on and research and study on stuff because I like to have knowledge because knowledge is power, right? But anyways, guys, kind of rambling now. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I hope you like this video. And again, I just want to encourage you guys to... Go to estate sales, yard sales, flea markets, all that kind of stuff out there. Get your name out there, what you're looking for. Build relationships, find friends and other pickers and stuff who can keep their eye out for you. And you can do the same for them, whatever they may collect. Statesales.net. Please check out part one. Subscribe if you hadn't. And uh, I'll be getting back to you soon. Thank you.